In this chapter, we're going to use a MIDI keyboard to create a music track. I'm using a Yamaha KX88 as my controller. Some controllers also have internal sounds, like a Yamaha motif, and you may want to use those sounds. And if that's what you want to do, simply record yourself performing on a synthesizer, then you would take the audio output of your synth and record it like we record other instruments like guitars and basses. And you'd be creating and editing audio files. This chapter on MIDI is about using the keyboard as a kind of typewriter. And we create a series of musical notes called a sequence. And once those notes are in Pro Tools, we can change the sounds that we hear sort of like we change the fonts in a word processing document. The MIDI data is independent of the sounds, and we can change one without changing the other. And we can do things with MIDI that we can't do with real instruments. Here's a piano sound, but we can't do this with a real piano. So let me switch to a browser and show you that there are two ways to get MIDI data into Pro Tools. One is to use the MIDI connector. I really don't want to enlarge this. So I'm going to put my cursor down here, but I'm pointing to that. So that's a five pin MIDI connect. There's an in and there's an out. This is Pro Tools' website. So I'm pulling this document live and it shows here that the in is kind of on the round side. If we call this the flat side and that's the round side and the out is over here close to the SPDIF connectors. On my system, they're backwards. The in is over here and the out is over there. So before you spend an hour, like I just did, read the connections on the back and don't just assume it's the one on the left or the one on the right. Remember, goes intas and goes outas. An out of your MIDI goes in to the M box and an out of the M box goes into your MIDI. The other way to get MIDI data into Pro Tools is to use this USB connector. Some keyboards will send out the data simultaneously, but some have you choose one or the other. I'm using the MIDI cable for my KX88, but once you choose a method, there shouldn't be any difference in the data. It's not like one sounds good and the other doesn't. They should be the same. Back to Pro Tools, and let's talk about what we're actually recording here. When we recorded audio, we noticed that we recorded frequencies and amplitudes. Let me create a MIDI track. So Shift Command N. And I'm going to switch to MIDI because I want you to see this. When I switch to MIDI, is it going to be mono or stereo? Well, that goes away when you choose MIDI. There is no mono or stereo in MIDI. And the default is ticks. So let me make MIDI track. I'm going to put it in record and tap my keyboard. And we see that we're receiving signal. If I don't see anything, I want to go to setup, MIDI, input devices, and be sure that the device where I'm sending MIDI into is checked here. Let's say OK. And in Setup and MIDI, let's look at Input Filter. This is where you set the information that Pro Tools will receive and then keep track of, record, from your performance. The default is All Except Aftertouch. That's a good place to start. You do want to record your sustain pedal events and your pitch wheel events. So there's really no reason to change this unless you have specific performance data that you want to either add or reject. Cancel out of this. Let's go to Options and make sure that MIDI through is checked. You might think that because there's an input device page that there's also an output device page, but there isn't. If you want to send MIDI data from Pro Tools to an external synth, you connect the MIDI out of Pro Tools to the MIDI in of your synth using a cable. And then on your MIDI track, set the output to predefined. So let's take a look at that. So it's receiving here. And then I want to send to the control on whichever MIDI channel I'm using. There's 16 discrete channels on every cable. Using your MIDI outs and MIDI throughs, you can use kind of one cable to daisy chain your way through your MIDI devices. Okay, one more parameter here to talk about in MIDI. You see that the top here is 127. So over when we were dealing with audio, we had a 0 dB and 12 dB of gain and so forth. There's our zero setting. Let me just move this a little bit this way. When we're dealing with MIDI, a very light tap on the keyboard will give you a low velocity and a very a much harder tap will give you all the way to 127. That's called velocity, but you can think of it as volume. It's going to trigger the sound in a louder way the harder you tap. 
Remember when we did audio, we were very concerned anytime we got up into this area because it was easy to send it just one tick further into clipping. And we don't have to worry about that with MIDI. There's no overdrive here. You can use 127 all day long and not worry about distorting your signal.